Why does one person become really good at chess and another person not become really good at chess? There are basically three explanations that I think people come up with when they try to answer this question. One is intelligence or general cognitive ability, working memory capacity, processing speed, fluid reasoning. The second explanation is about how you train. How many hours have you put in into your chess study and what do you do with those hours? And the third explanation is about personality and motivation. What kind of person is interested in chess and excels at chess? So this video looks at these three explanations. So let's talk about IQ. The first thing to know about IQ is that IQ test scores are correlated with both chess playing and chess skill. So generally speaking, chess players have higher IQs than non-chess players, but it's not quite as straightforward as that. So this relationship between IQ and chess playing is more prominent in children than it is in adults. So the older you get, the more that this difference just fades away. Now, I suspect that the relationship between chess playing skill and IQ test scores in children has more to do with the kinds of children that get exposed to chess and encouraged to play chess. And my guess is that children who seem intellectually inclined are generally uh, exposed to and encouraged in chess more often. My guess is that they would also tend to come from higher socioeconomic class as well. But that's just speculation on my part. If you look only at serious chess players as well, you don't see a strong relationship between IQ and chess skill. For some measures of IQ, their relationship is actually reversed. So the stronger players actually have lower IQs than the weaker players. But if you look at all the studies as a whole, like in a recent meta-analysis, you will find that there is a very small correlation between IQ and chess skill. If you've been on the internet for more than 20 seconds, you've probably heard someone yell that correlation does not imply causation. We have to keep in mind that just because IQ test scores and skill level are correlated doesn't necessarily mean that IQ is leading to higher skill levels. But there's something else that is important. Just because two things are correlated together does not mean that one thing explains the other very well. Among adult chess players, the general IQ score explains less than 1% of the overall variation in chess skill. The best the researchers could come up with was to identify four subscales of IQ tests that were slightly more correlated with chess skill. Now, if you only look at these four subscales, what you get is a whopping 6% of the variation in chess skill explained. By the way, general visual spatial ability is never correlated with chess skill. That does not seem to be an important cognitive ability for chess players. I should note that playing chess does not increase your IQ test scores. I don't think it's important to increase your IQ test scores, but if you care about that, playing chess is not gonna help you get there. Probably practicing a lot with IQ tests will get you there. But that's another conversation. The best evidence for this comes from another meta-analysis, which looked at all of the studies that explored how chess playing could improve IQ. And what you see in that meta-analysis is you do see a small effect size. Initially, it seems like, oh, hey, chess playing does increase IQ, but this relationship is inversely correlated with how rigorous the design of the study is. So the better that you design your study, the less likely you are to find that chess playing increases IQ. This is a pretty good indicator that any relationship that uh, studies are finding between chess playing and IQ is illusory. Let's talk about training. Now there's broad agreement among researchers that a special kind of practice called deliberate practice is really important to developing high levels of skill. Basically, deliberate practice involves the following things. One, identifying the key skills in the discipline or the domain. Two, a very challenging kind of practice. Three, time for critical self-evaluation. Four, feedback uh, from an expert 
that is hopefully going to guide you and tell you what to do next, and five more practice opportunities on the same thing. Unfortunately, measuring deliberate practice like this is rather challenging, so you're usually trying to measure something else that you think is related to deliberate practice. How many competitive tournaments have people been involved in? How much time do they spend analyzing chess on their free time? How much time they spend practicing alone? But how much does training really matter? Well, there's a meta-analysis for that. One research group found that time spent studying chess alone was the best indicator of chess skill. But they were able to combine that with some other training measures that also correlated with chess skill to come up with a composite training score. Now this training score explained about 40% of the variation in chess skill. That still leaves a lot of things unexplained, doesn't it? Finally, let's talk about personality and motivation. There's a lot less research about this kind of thing. There was one study that I looked at that found that elite male chess players were more introverted than the general population and elite female chess players were more extroverted than the general population. What this says, I don't really know. The author suggests that maybe to excel in a male-dominated field, women need to be more extroverted. Possible. Doing deliberate practice properly requires a lot of effort, so it takes a lot of motivation to just sustain that kind of effort. This one study that I read basically finds that to be true. People who had a higher need for competition, a higher desire to excel, a higher desire to improve their skill levels, those are the people who were doing better at chess. There's a lot of weaknesses to the study. What they do show is that higher levels of motivation are linked to greater hours of deliberate practice, which themselves are linked to higher levels of skill. As we're talking about these different factors and the impact on chess skill, it's important to keep in mind that all of this is happening within a cultural context. And so if you start messing with the cultural context, you probably also start messing with these findings. For instance, if chess was a female-dominated field instead of a male-dominated field, would you see different personality types coming to the fore? Possibly. If chess was not thought of as an intellectual activity, if it was thought of, say, like video game playing, would you see the same kind of relationship? I don't know. As time goes on, the technologies that help people train also change. So that changes the training environment. So what are the constants here? I think there are two important constants. One, IQ is never going to be strongly associated with chess expertise. And the reason, it doesn't just have to do with chess, it has to do with the nature of expertise. So in domain after domain after domain, what you find is that expertise is very narrow. When you become an expert mechanic, that doesn't make you an expert philosopher or an expert mathematician or an expert gardener. It's just not the case that becoming really accomplished in one field has any particular impact on other fields that you may or may not have experience in. And this is true of chess, just like everything else. Our association between chess and kind of intellectualism is really a cultural one. We don't think of StarCraft players as being intellectual kind of heavyweights, but the strategic thinking that is required in a game of StarCraft is certainly at least comparable to a game of chess. The second thing is that Training is always going to be a large component of what constitutes chess skill. The reason is the bulk of what makes people expert at anything involves knowledge and skills. Now, these are things that you have to acquire. Now, whatever other advantages or disadvantages your brain has, you still have to acquire this knowledge and these skills. That means that how you train and how you learn is always going to play a large role in how good you get. References, as always, are in the description. If you missed part one of this series, there's only two parts. You can go uh, click the video. I guess I will have it somewhere, somewhere on the screen. I'm not quite sure where. Okay, see you next time.